Probably the best known reversible cycle is the Carnot cycle, first proposed in 1824 by French engineer, Saudi Carnot. An ideal Carnot cycle is totally reversible. If heat flow through an infinite temperature difference, or the temperature of both system and surrounding is nearly same, then it is reversible process. But if the temperature difference is finite or huge, then it is irreversible process. Therefore, during heat transfer in the Carnot cycle there must be no finite temperature difference. When the engine takes heat from the hot reservoir TH, the working substance of the engine must also be at TH. Otherwise, irreversible heat flow would occur. Consider a closed system that consists of a gas contained in an adiabatic piston cylinder device. The insulation of the cylinder head is such that, it may be removed to bring the cylinder into contact with reservoirs, to provide heat transfer. The four reversible processes that make up the Carnot cycle are as follows. Reversible isothermal expansion Initially at state 1, the temperature of the gas is Th, and the cylinder head is in close contact with a source at temperature Th. The gas is allowed to expand slowly, doing work on the surroundings. As the gas expands, the temperature of the gas tends to decrease. But as soon as the temperature drops by an infinitesimal amount dt, some heat is transferred from the reservoir into the gas, raising the gas temperature to Th. Thus, the gas temperature is kept constant at Th. Since the temperature difference between the gas and the reservoir never exceeds a differential amount dt, this is a reversible heat transfer process. It continues until the piston reaches position 2. The amount of total heat transferred to the gas during this process is QH. For an ideal gas, internal energy is function of temperature only, and if the temperature is kept constant then change in internal energy shall be zero. That's why according to first law every heat given is converted to work done. And, that's why, there is change in pressure, and volume only. As work done is related with pressure and volume change. Reversible adiabatic expansion During this process, temperature drops from TH to TL. At state 2, the reservoir that was in contact with the cylinder head is removed and replaced by insulation so that the system becomes adiabatic. Adiabatic means, zero heat transfer. Here the temperature is not lost to the surroundings, since no heat is allowed to escape, instead, it is used to expand the gas. The gas continues to expand slowly, doing work on the surroundings until its temperature drops from TH to TL. The piston is assumed to be frictionless and the process to be quasi-equilibrium, so the process is reversible as well as adiabatic. You can verify this expansion process, using first law, for adiabatic there is zero heat transfer. So change in internal energy must equal work done by the system and for ideal gas, internal energy is function of temperature change only. So when temperature changes, the system does work by raising the piston upward. At state 3, the insulation at the cylinder head is removed, and the cylinder is brought into contact with a sink at temperature TL. 
Now the piston is pushed inward by an external force, doing work on the gas. As the gas is compressed, its temperature tends to rise. But as soon as it rises by an infinitesimal amount dt, heat is transferred from the gas to the sink, causing the gas temperature to drop to Tl. It continues until the piston reaches state 4. The amount of heat rejected from the gas during this process is QL. Again you can verify this compression process using first law. Heat transfer out from the system to sink is negative quantity. Temperature TL is constant, so zero energy change. And the work done will be negative, which means compression. Reversible adiabatic compression State 4 is such that when the low temperature reservoir is removed, the insulation is put back on the cylinder head, and the gas is compressed in a reversible manner, so the gas returns to its initial state, state 1. The temperature rises from TL to TH during this reversible adiabatic compression process, which completes the cycle. On a PV diagram, the area under the process curve represents the boundary work for internally reversible processes. We see that the area under curve 1 to 3 is the work done by the gas during the expansion part of the cycle, and the area under curve 3 4 1 is the work done on the gas during the compression part of the cycle. The area enclosed by the path of the cycle is the difference between these two and represents the network done during the cycle.